just because something can happen doesn't mean it is likely to happen. And I think that means in this debate, harms have to be weighed on their depth of impact in contrast to uh, the existence of those harms across uh, a lot of individuals. As what could happen to a select few people is more felt, more concentrated, and more deeply gem um, and more deeply damaging towards them in contrast to what is felt by a lot of different people, right? I think this debate cannot be won by claims of generalized impacts as they are way too dispersed and way too tiny. We therefore have to think about where anonymity most likely happens or is used, and in these fringe examples are where the debate's tipping points lie in. Three different claims from the opening opposition, or, or from the um, opposition side. The first is that this is most helpful for minorities seeking communal spaces. Secondly, that anonymity creates richer discussions. And lastly, that this makes social media more dangerous on the prop side. Firstly, why is this most helpful for minorities seeking communal spaces? The premise of this argument is simple. A lot of minorities, such as racial groups, women, gender and sexual minorities alike, use social media anonymously to reap the benefits of talking to people freely, whilst keeping themselves um, away from danger or safe from danger. And the point here is that you have to stay anonymous in order to keep using these social media sites because otherwise things or features about you would be known by people around you in person and therefore that would harm you significantly. Therefore, they have to stay anonymous, right? Why is it therefore helpful for these individuals? There are five different reasons why. First is because now they can build a community with each other. They can grow from mutual interaction. This can be um, alongside people from your same state, for example, that you previously didn't know. But it could also be with people from your country or from different countries in order for you to learn from them. This just feels really good for those individuals and you can grow their numbers in specific spaces that maybe don't welcome them as much in which they are very, very tiny minorities. That's why this is very, very important for them to create communitarian societies or at least communities in which they can interact with one another and do things like share information with one another. That's the first reason why this is helpful. Second reason why it's helpful is because it provides them safety, i.e. what to do to protect your th like like themselves, for example, what places they should um, like like visit in that specific state or city um, that would be friendly to them, right? And in the context of like like racial minorities, but can um, also be in the context of like like religious minorities as well. So I think the point here is that this allows minorities to collectivize and to protect each other by giving them information about where to go and what to do in specific situations in order for them to maybe not get shot at, for example. Thirdly, I think they can share resources with, you, uh, with, with like um, each other in the form of finances, in the sense that they can now get money from each other in order to grow their small businesses, for example, in many online marketplaces, we see this happening um, across like like different um, industries. And I think this is very, very important to allow for alternative types of funding that might not be available to those individuals to be now available to them because now like a lot of banks see them as risk averse, for example, and therefore not want to lend the money, but now they can get money from other individuals. Fourthly, I think they can um, improve their search for help during emergencies such as abortion clinics or care homes, for example, that would otherwise not be available to them. And fifthly, they can feel a sense of catharsis by interacting with people vicariously. I think a huge this is a huge felt benefit for minorities who've been locked out of any sense of happiness because they aren't able to interact with one another because they feel unsafe in their own in, um, in-person communities, for example, and therefore they have to access um, the online space, which is specifically done through anonymity in social media. Notice that all these channels and benefits that I talked about can only be accessed in secret and in a world wide web where there are zero barriers to entry except an email and a password. A couple of preemptive responses against the proposition against this argument. I think prop will probably say that this will harm people. I have three different responses against that. The first is that I think there are often verified professionals on social media that you can chat with whilst anonymizing your identity. This means that you can access safe channels without having to totally out yourself, for example, as a specific individual. I think secondly, harm happens on either side of the house if people meet up with other people they randomly meet online. I think this is as inexclusive as a harm if the prop even wants to bring this. Thirdly, I think even if prop says minorities could also encompass online trolls and right-wing extremists, for example, online trolls exist on both sides and they could genuinely just use a pseudonym instead of being anonymous, so I think that's probably an exclusive. But even if that would be claimed as skirting the motion, I think often extremists benefit from a face. I think if they are anonymous, they seem less believable, so you would actually get more benefits on our side by reducing their critical mass overall because they are seen as someone random in contrast to seeing as an actual person that they can collectivize on a pretty horrible issue. Therefore, this means this is the most important impact in the debate because they're the most vulnerable group of individuals. And so far as I've given you many reasons as to why they would benefit from this motion, I think this means that on our side of the house, we're already winning. But second point of waiting, I think this is most likely to happen as an impact as there is a very strong incentive from this particular group to be anonymous in contrast to having a strong incentive from any other particular group to become anonymous. Therefore, you have to weigh this actor highly um, over all other actors. 
even if you don't buy that first um, argument, I have two other arguments to prove how other actors would also greatly benefit on our side of the house. Secondly, anonymity would create richer discussions. The premise here is that when people do not have a filter, they are more likely to voice out their real concerns. And this is good in two different ways. Firstly, I think this allows greater scrutiny to public officials, companies, and other industries and other organizations, for example, because people now can freely speak up without having to get their employee card like, like rescinded, for example, or having any kind of harm placed against them or their families. This means people are more likely to share information with one another. I think secondly as well, Pla this also platforms whistleblowing for the most important issues in society on channels like Reddit, for example, but also on many other popular sites. I think this means we encourage a zero filter approach to things like corporate practices to empower the people applying for jobs, for example, prospective students and other individuals who need this information who are now able to obtain that information and therefore have a balanced view from both what the company tells them is their work culture, for example, to what people who hate that work culture tells them, right? I think this means people have greater access to information. Why is this therefore a very, very important argument? Firstly, I think information access is an a priori good insofar as we can't ascertain how people react to different pieces of information, but we can ascertain that people will act in better ways when empowered with more information. Thus, increasing access to info is better than silencing individuals, for example, or is better than just like forcing different types of information or specific types of information to be open. Um, to the public. But secondly, I think the biggest argument from prop would be that it's bad on celebrities, but I don't really care about them given that the harm is symmetric and they've already signed a social contract with society that tells them um, that 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 like allows for public scrutiny to happen. I think in the case of harassment and abuse, there are many channels on social media to mitigate this, like the block button, turn on off comments functions, for example, or like the report function, etc. This means that this is heavily mitigated and therefore is a much smaller harm in contrast to the benefit of creating richer discussions. Final argument, why does this make social media more dangerous on the prop side? Note that if anonymity didn't exist, because in this motion we have to value judge two different so sort of like, um, like realities basically, there must probably be some defensive mechanism against anonymity. I posit that this defensive mechanism would be very, very bad on their side. Firstly, because big companies can regulate it more because they have to make sure that you are you have an actual identity, for example, that you're not just a random person, for example, that you have a national identity card or whatnot. This means that in order to talk on Instagram, you literally have to put in your identity card and you have to put in many different um, like private pieces of information to now be out in the public or at least out to the company, for example. This is quite harmful. But secondly, I think there's more information that's private that is now collected by those big companies, which they can use to do things such as um, store and filing it to large donors who want to gain voter information to improve their political campaigning. And this improves harmful capitalist lobbyists, but it also harms a lot of the integrity and trust that they provide towards their customers, primarily because that means they can get every single customer profile and understand every single one of their preferences through data analytics from um, like Google or from different social media apps, for example, because that means they can um, get more of that information because it can be tied towards a specific individual. For all those reasons, I think this is most helpful for minorities on our side. And secondly, that this creates richer discussions. And finally, that this creates um, a more dangerous platform on the prop side um, and therefore opposition.